Hancock, the movie begins with a high-speed police chase involving armed criminals who are firing back at the officers and urgently calling for backup. This chaotic pursuit also leads to accidents involving innocent bystanders on the road. Meanwhile, Hancock, a super-powered individual, is on the other side of town, passed out on a town bench after a night of heavy drinking. A young boy notices the ongoing police chase and tries to wake Hancock. When the boy informs Hancock about the situation, Hancock responds with sarcasm, asking if the boy wants a reward for the information. The boy leaves in frustration, and Hancock eventually wakes up, hungover. He retrieves a bottle of liquor from under the bench and takes off into the sky, causing the bench to shatter upon his departure. While flying, Hancock encounters various obstacles, including birds and a near collision with an airplane. He takes a sip of liquor in flight, which leads to him accidentally crashing into a large signboard. Debris from the signboard falls onto the police vehicles involved in the chase, causing multiple accidents and injuries. Despite this, Hancock continues flying and intercepts the criminal's car, tearing off its rear end and perching himself at the back. Kindly take a second to subscribe in order to support this channel. The three criminals inside the car become terrified and attempt to shoot Hancock. In response, Hancock tries to communicate with them to stop the vehicle, using both friendly words and threats. When the criminals open fire on him, Hancock becomes enraged and uses his superhuman strength to anchor the car to the road, bringing it to a halt. He then takes control of the car and flies with it, tossing the criminals around and ultimately pinning the vehicle to a sharp tower. Hancock's actions not only waste valuable police resources and time but also result in significant damage that will require costly repairs. Those in positions of authority are frustrated by his reckless behavior and wish he would either leave the city alone or use his powers for good. They suspect that Hancock may have personal issues and is using the city as a way to punish himself. Hancock observes these events from a quiet bar while sipping liquor and even threatens an elderly woman who looks at him. Meanwhile, Ray is giving a presentation where he introduces a heart-shaped logo as a symbol that can potentially change the world. He advises one of his colleagues to offer his life-changing drug for free to help people. After the presentation, Ray calls his wife to inform her of the project's challenges and that he's heading home. In the same message, he asks her to prepare spaghetti and meatballs for dinner. Ray finds himself stuck in traffic, surrounded by honking cars. He spots an approaching train, but some vehicles are trapped on the railway tracks. Desperate to warn the car in front of him, he attempts to honk and even taps it from behind, but it remains immobile. Just as disaster seems imminent, Hancock arrives on the scene, swiftly moving Ray's car out of harm's way and flipping it upside down onto another vehicle. Hancock also intervenes to stop the train, using his body to prevent a catastrophic collision, although this action damages the train and results in multiple carriages piling up. Impressed by Hancock's heroic intervention, Ray approaches Hancock and offers gratitude. Hancock's interaction with Ray's family begins on a positive note, as he agrees to fly Ray home. Hancock drops Ray off near his house, and, with his superhuman strength, he moves Ray's car to the driveway. Ray's wife, Mary, and their son, Aaron, are startled by the car's unexpected relocation. Ray provides them with a version of events that portrays Hancock as their savior, while Mary remains skeptical of Hancock's intentions. As they share dinner, conversation ensues, and Aaron becomes fascinated by Hancock, while Mary remains apprehensive about having him in their home. They discuss a bully at Aaron's school, and Hancock encourages the young boy to stand up to bullies, contrary to his parents' teachings about turning the other cheek. Mary's discomfort with Hancock's presence becomes increasingly evident. When it's time for Hancock to leave, he bids farewell to the family and teases Aaron, but Mary remains unresponsive. She takes Aaron upstairs, and Ray asks Hancock for a favor in return for saving his life. Ray reveals that he works in public relations and suggests that Hancock could transform his image from a troublemaker to a beloved superhero, thereby gaining the public's favor. Ray provides Hancock with his contact information, urging him to consider the proposal, before Hancock departs. Ray and Mary discuss Hancock's presence in their lives as they prepare for bed, with Ray hopeful that he can change Hancock's life, and Mary convinced that Hancock is incapable of change and should not be involved due to his destructive tendencies. Unbeknownst to them, 
Hancock eavesdrops on their conversation from the shadows. Hancock awakens in his secluded dwelling, a trailer located in a remote area, with the persistent effects of a hangover. In the bright morning sun, he reflects on Ray's intentions while holding Ray's business card. Later in the day, Hancock arrives in Ray's neighborhood, where children are playing. One of the children calls him an asshole, a term he despises, which infuriates him. Hancock warns the child not to use that name, and when the child persists, Hancock tosses her in the air to emphasize his point, prompting the other children to express their disapproval. Ray steps outside to meet Hancock, and the girl falls back to the ground, causing her to complain to her mother. Ray and Hancock go inside Ray's house, where Ray proceeds to share his observations about Hancock's actions, highlighting the unintended consequences that result from Hancock's efforts to save the world. Ray suggests a plan to change Hancock's public image and make him a beloved figure instead of a controversial one, explaining that Hancock's loneliness drives him to behave recklessly, further fueling public disdain. As Mary and her son return from a soccer game, Mary is visibly concerned upon seeing Hancock. She sends Aaron upstairs to change and asks Ray if he has seen the news. Mary turns on the television, revealing that Hancock has a warrant for his arrest due to numerous rule violations. Ray views this as an opportunity to reshape Hancock's life, given that nobody likes him. Ray advises Hancock to turn himself in and promises that if people don't miss him in about two weeks, Hancock will be free to leave. Hancock reluctantly sees the logic in Ray's plan and apologizes to the public before surrendering himself to authorities. As Hancock is escorted through the prison, a group of inmates surrounds him, recognizing him as the one responsible for their incarceration. Hancock attempts to defuse the situation by asking for passage, but when one inmate refuses, Hancock takes a drastic and unconventional action by putting one prisoner's head into another prisoner's buttocks. This unorthodox display of power compels the other inmates to allow Hancock to pass without further confrontation. Ray regularly visits Hancock in prison, providing guidance on how to gain public favor and navigate the rules of rehabilitation. Hancock becomes part of a support group but remains distant and uncooperative. Ray continues his routine visits, group meetings, and even engages Hancock in basketball games. Meanwhile, the city begins to notice Hancock's absence as crime rates rise. One day, Mary brings her son Aaron to visit Hancock in prison, bearing spaghetti and meatballs. During their visit, Mary takes the opportunity to emphasize Ray's good intentions and her hope that Hancock won't disappoint her husband. As they prepare to leave, Aaron inadvertently leaves his favorite toy behind. On another occasion, Ray brings Hancock a superhero costume, although Hancock is initially reluctant to wear it. While playing outside, Hancock accidentally throws a ball over the prison's perimeter wall, and when he jumps to retrieve it, he finds himself back inside the prison. For the first time, Hancock opens up during a group session, revealing some personal details and his real name. This act earns him the applause and respect of the other group members. While asleep in his cell, Hancock receives a message that the chief of police urgently needs his assistance. Hancock contemplates this call while examining his reflection in the mirror. He shaves his beard and presents a more refined appearance. At the crime scene, a gang is overpowering the police during a robbery. They possess a heavy weapon that has trapped a female officer, the same woman whose husband was killed in Iraq. News of the intense gunfire between the police and the gang inside the bank spreads rapidly. Hancock arrives at the scene and, for the first time, lands without causing destruction. The officers are surprised, but Hancock offers words of encouragement as he's briefed on the situation inside the bank. Hancock courageously steps between the gunfire and rescues the injured female officer, using a car as a shield to transport her to safety. He then flies into the bank, systematically neutralizing the gang members and saving the hostages one by one. The gang's leader, however, threatens to detonate a device unless Hancock assists in breaking into the bank's vault and facilitating his escape. Hancock responds by severing the gang leader's hand and delivering it to the police, leaving the remaining work to law enforcement. Hancock receives applause and appreciation from spectators at the scene. That evening, Ray, Mary, and Hancock share a meal and their personal stories. Ray reveals that his wife died while giving birth to their son Aaron and Mary recalls their early encounters when Ray was baffled by diaper changing. However, 
Ray finds it hard to believe Hancock's story about falling from the sky, being from Miami, having amnesia, and rapidly healing from a head injury. As Ray gets drunk during the evening, Hancock carries him to his bed. Before leaving, Hancock is drawn to Mary, and they share a kiss. Mary's unexpected strength is revealed when she throws Hancock out through the fridge and the wall. She warns Hancock not to reveal her abilities to Ray, and when Ray awakens to find a missing wall, Mary explains that Hancock sneezed through it. Hancock resumes his isolated life and becomes increasingly curious about the existence of another super-powered individual like himself. Hancock's visit to Ray's office leads to an accidental confrontation between Hancock and Mary, culminating in the revelation of Mary's superhuman abilities to Ray. Back at home, Mary, Ray, and Aaron have a conversation, where Mary explains the unique bond between her and Hancock, implying that they were created for each other and are the last of their kind. Hancock is out buying snacks when he is alerted to the presence of hidden criminals in a store. In the ensuing confrontation, Hancock is shot and wounded for the first time. He is rushed to the hospital, and Mary visits him, revealing that his proximity to her is causing him to lose his powers. Ray and Aaron also visit Hancock in the hospital. Meanwhile, the bank robbers seek revenge on Hancock, leading to a violent confrontation in which Mary is injured and left in critical condition. As Hancock tries to fly away despite his diminishing powers, Mary suddenly regains consciousness and fully heals. With Mary's health restored, Hancock resumes his superhero activities. One day, Hancock calls Ray and tells him to look up at the moon, where his heart-shaped logo is prominently displayed. Hancock continues his heroic activities, flying around the city and helping those in need, finally earning the admiration and gratitude of the public. Click on the above video for more entertainment.